your first experiences in the martial arts? What made you first walk into a dojo door, and uh, what dojo was that? <laughs> I'm not sure you ever want to put this on. <laughs> There was a uh, incident where I had a knack when I was very young of uh, having a, a mouth that was much larger than my physical abilities to, to deal with it. Um, and I uh, said the wrong words to, we were visiting uh, some uh, junior high, high school uh, for a day, and I said the wrong words to some football players uh, who introduced me to the commode. <laughs> I figured at that point in time I better learn to either keep my mouth shut or in conjunction with it uh, learn something to help me. <laughs> and a school opened up um, near our house uh, uh, in uh, Perrysville in uh, Pittsburgh area, suburb of Pittsburgh, uh, North Hills Jiu Jitsu Karate. We happened to see a demo of it at the, at the local North Hills Mall, uh, and it was something I thought this would be I'd like to do, and uh, so I did it, and I had to, part of the agreement with my mother was that I had to uh, take on uh, multiple paper routes to pay for my own dues. Um, so that's what I did. I started delivering the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, which was a morning paper. I delivered the North Hills News Record, which was a weekly and then I delivered the Pittsburgh Press, which was an evening paper. Uh, and I was able to make my dues, monies, and pay for my equipment. Um, <clears throat> About what year was this happening? Um, early 60s. Mm -hmm. Do you think you were kind of lucky to have a, a dojo in your area at that point? Because, I mean, I, I'm not sure how, how widespread it was. There were, there were not many schools in mm -hmm. the Pittsburgh area. There was an mm -hmm. issue with school in downtown. Pittsburgh. Uh, there was a school in Castle Shannon, my, my instructor's uh, school. Uh, there was a school uh, in uh, North Hills further out, uh, which was Glen Primrose. Uh, and uh, so you had maybe five schools in the entire Pittsburgh area mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. It was not uncommon in the early 60s to have a right brown belt as the head of a school. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you had a black belt, regardless of what degree, that was like, this was a, this was a top-notch school. Just were a few and far between. Um, do you recall much about your first teacher at that school day? Oh, yes. Uh, that's him right there, Hank Talbot. Uh, as you can see, he was a little uh, Frenchman. He was a plasterer by trade. Uh, he really didn't have a neck. It just went from the head right to... <laughs> Right to his shoulders, and his his hands were like vices. Um, and uh, he was he was extremely good, uh, a close in type of, of fighter. Uh, many times, this now we're talking the old days. Uh, he would uh, be on the mat with a cigar, uh, and he would just keep it keep the end lit enough. <laughs> Okay, and one of his things was how to use the cigar once he got hold of you and then hit, hit, hit burn, you know. Uh, so, a little different approach. Um, never dropped ashes on the mat. So, um, it's a but, skill in itself. <laughs> yes. And he, he sort of became my, uh, uh, he sort of took me on. Uh, my dad died when I was seven. And there were only two kids in the entire school at the time myself and his partners, uh, Bill Starr's niece, um, her name was Pam or Pamela, uh, and uh, she was a little more advanced to me, so she used to throw my butt all around all the time, uh, but uh, he sort of adopted me and then, uh, took care of me, and uh, uh, then I would work for him in the summers as a, as a uh, plasterer's helper. So you were like an early teen at that point? Yeah. yeah. Preteen. 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 <laughs> Early teen. 